Good afternoon, good evening students, I hope you're doing good, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're back with another lecture concerning literature for third year students. As you can see, it will be about modernism as a literary movement, of course, but you should know that we've seen other movements such as Romanticism, like Realism and also Naturalism. Of course, all these lectures can be found on this channel, all you have to do is search and um, as usual, before I start, of course, I invite you to like the Facebook page of this channel in order to be notified whenever I post something new and also subscribe um, on this channel if it's not already done. That would encourage me to do more and also help help you out during the periods of exams. Anyways, uh, with that being said, we shall start with the plan of the lecture first, which is uh, we're going to start with the definition of the movement. We're going to talk a little bit about the movement. Uh, we are going to give the period of the movement, of course. Then we are going to talk about the factors or the reasons or why this movement emerged. And we are going to talk about the scientific roots of the movement. Then we are going to talk about the artistic roots. And finally, we are going to talk about the characteristics. And within the characteristics, we are going to uh, bring up the plot. Uh, the plot and um, the themes and also the style and even language and at the end to round off with this video we are going to talk about the um, some of the modernist uh, authors of course we have many so I just picked only three um, and I hope it will be um, enough but of course you can find on find others uh, on internet so with that being said we shall start with the definition modernism first it started in the late 19th century until the mid 20th century so modernism refers to the complete or even the radical change from the old beliefs or you can say the old artistic movements in literature it's a change sometimes it's considered to be a change or a disruption from the Victorian way of doing or morality and it can be a representation of the chaotic picture of society. So, so far, um, when you talk about the um, change from the old beliefs, and when you say a disruption from the Victorian way of doing, which means before modernism, there was an era called the Victorian era. So, anything that was related to that era in terms of notions, ideas in general, um, anything that was related also to literature, modernist authors wanted to give up on those ideas. They wanted to create something new, something modern. Okay? So this is as far as the definition is concerned. We move to the factors of the emergence of this movement. We are going to talk mainly about three factors. The first one is industrialization as usual. Industry, you should know that industrial revolution, if you want, started way before the 19th century. We all know that. But it reached its peak in, uh, its peak, sorry, in the late um, 19th century, if you want. Um, when you have such, um, a, such good industry, if you want, uh, prosperous industry, you have what we call the phenomenon of urbanization. When you have urbanization, you have a rapid growth of cities. And of course, you have this um, population is growing so fast and the, the government is um, trying to um, satisfy all the needs of the population and so on and so forth. It leads to the World War, which leads us to the second point. That is the horrors of the World Wars. We have two World Wars, the first and the second. The first was between 1914 and 1918. The second one is between 1939 until 1945. So when you talk about war, which means there is death, and World War, which means almost all, let's say, um, all countries or nations participated in these two World Wars. So the death is let's say um, the the casualties is is greater so you can say that these or the horrors that um, these two world wars left have impacted if you want uh, modernist authors so this is what led also to the emergence of this movement of course after the the end of the world war the, the both world war um, 
the two world wars sorry um this marked a loss of faith faith in what of course faith in god government and human goodness you should you should remember this the people or the population lost faith in god why because some some of them might tell you that if god exists why did he let such massacres um happen uh, here we mean the world wars even the the the, uh, the population lost faith in the government why because these governments were supposed to protect the population from any harm but they, <coughs> sorry they were the first um who um decided to go uh, to war and also and so on and so forth and finally we have the human goodness when we talk about the human goodness which means human or human beings are supposed to be good are supposed to be kind but in time of wars you will find human in their most savage image they kill each other they destroy each other they butcher each other they murder each other they do not care as long as they want to survive so this resulted in a greater focus on the individual so these are some of the factors that led to the emergence of this movement that we call modernism now we move to the scientific roots when we talk about the scientific roots we mainly need to talk about Darwin Karl Marx Freud and Nietzsche so these four let's say um, men of letters scientists um, they have contributed in the emergence of this movement which means they prepared the ground for modernism to emerge let's talk about Darwin Darwin and Karl Marx I mean both of them have contributed in the loss of faith see Darwin is that we can say that the ideas the theories of Darwin are interrelated with the movement itself because we said that modernism refers to a complete or radical change from the old beliefs old beliefs Darwin was doing so but scientifically I mean the natural selection of Darwin for example since this movement was about breaking off from the old ways Darwin sought to overturn previous ways of thinking about humans history and the universe which means the theories of Darwin and the principles of modernism are interrelated they have the same goal which is to overturn or to break off from old beliefs the second one is Karl Marx he also uh, contributed um, in the loss of faith uh, for example he denounced the exploitation of men whether during the world war or during the daily life if you want then you have the famous segment Freud when we, when we talk about Freud we mainly I mean the first thing that comes into our minds is psychoanalysis so um, I mean I don't want to go into details but if you want to learn more about uh, Freud you can you can find that on the internet um, but just to give you an idea of course you have the um, the ID that represents the desires of a human being I mean the instinct you have the super ego which means generally it's something that um, gives you the moral or I mean everything that is um, education something that you use in order to prevent yourself from doing something bad and the ego is what we call the reality um, uh, principle and if you want uh, a super ego is there to control the ID's desires uh, this is something that is related to psychology and of course at that time that was something revolutionary and it is I mean until today uh, some um, psychiatrists use this and of course uh, this leads us to the next uh, scientist uh, who is um, Nietzsche so Nietzsche wrote a book uh, that we call the Twilight of the Idols um, I recently started to read this book I highly advise you to read it it's uh, it's an amazing book um, so Nietzsche tells us to destroy the ideas we have currently have of course in order in order to give birth to the Superman inside us um, and mainly this Superman is free so he's talking about freedom he also 
uh, criticized Socrates, if you want. Um, well, this is as far as the scientific roots um, are concerned. Now we move to the artistic roots. We start with Impressionism. It's an, art, it's an artistic style, of course. Uh, it, it started in France. And uh, impressionist, Impressionists, if you want, they seek to capture a feeling or experience rather than depict accurate depiction and perfection. So they are more into feelings and ex I mean experience and all rather than uh, doing the things that used to be done by uh, those who belong to uh, realism movement. Because at that time, they used to depict things as they are. Of course, this is among their principles, is to, de to depict exactly what they see. But Impressionism, or those who belong to this movement, of course, they seek to capture a feeling, like I said, or an experience, rather than depicting ac accurate um, depiction and perfection. The second artistic route that we are going to mention is Expressionism. It's almost the same, but not exactly. It is an art of expression to convey meaning and emotion. So here we, we can say that it is stronger than Impressionism, but because Impressionism sometimes is related to light, colors, and all, and that's, um, I mean, it is still in literature, but it's a different field uh, than uh, what we're studying currently. Of course, um, each artist, when I talk about Expressionism, each artist has his or her, of course, um, own way of expressing their emotions. And of course, even Expressionism was against depiction. Then we have the third artistic route, that is Futurism. It originated in Italy, or we can say that it has uh, Italian origins. Um, he, we can say those, um, I mean, those who belong to this movement discarded the art of the past and they celebrated the future, which means the development. Like I said, it is a radical change from the old beliefs, which means they, um, they, they neglected the old beliefs and they wanted something new, which is to celebrate the future in this uh, case of futurism. Of course, uh, then we move to Dadaism. So it was a reaction to First World War, and um, in this in this movement, in the, in these or in its principles, if you want, uh, we find a lot of nonsense in order to show how meaningless modern life is. Then we are going to go to the last point. Uh, of the artistic um, roots, which is Cubism. Cubism, basically, it's a rebellion against the objective and logical emphasis of the previous period. It places an emphasis on the subjective mental experience. I mean, artists include their experience within their work. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's in writing or um, a written work or spoken work or even um, something that is related to painting. So this this cubism is mainly known for the paintings. So these are the things or the, the roots, both scientific roots and artistic roots. Now we move to the characteristics of this um, so, in terms of the characteristics, we start with the plot. In the plot, we find few characters, and um, it is usually fragmented, which means it doesn't follow the chronological order. In other words, for example, you start in 1920, for example, within a story, any given story, you start with 1920, then you go until 1939 and you come back to 1925 and you come back to 1921 or 20 it means it is fragmented it is it is broken it doesn't um, it doesn't follow the chronological order and there is something that we call uh, reminiscence 
which is related to memory. It's, it's the um, ability to recall or to remember something about the past. So this is as far as the plot is concerned. Of course, you might find something else, but uh, I, for me, personally, I think it's enough to know about the plot. Um, then we have the themes. So, past intrusion into the present, which means some events that have happened in the past, usually they come back in the story. The second point is, you will find that the characters um, of the uh, modernist work um, th they seek the truth, happiness, joy, and even comfort. And you will see that these characters mostly, you can say, usually fail. They live in misery and usually ends with a death. And the setting is mostly like, um, to be like um, a decayed setting and destroyed one. You have also paralysis. Paralysis, basically, it's, uh, you know, after the war, when, when, when the war ends, nothing moves, absolutely nothing. You have no economy, you have no house, you have no family, so everything is static, nothing moves. This is what we mean by paralysis. Then we have disillusionment. This point is very important because, you know, after the end of the war, this is what we call the climate of post-war, if you want, um, First of, I mean, firstly, there's nothing moves, of course, and um, you know there is something um, like everyone is disappointed because if you take the victorious people and those who lost the war, those who lost the war, they thought that they were fighting for victory and all, and at the end, they lose the war, they lose their homes, they lose their economy, they lose a lot of things, so they are disappointed. This, this. Let's say feeling of disappointment is called disillusionment, and it is found in the modernist um, works. <clears> then <throat> we have another point that is madness. Madness. I don't know if you um, have read some of the poems of uh, William Faulkner. I remember that. Um, I mean, I, I do paraphrase, of course. I do not remember the exact words, but there was someone's mom who died. And um, seeing her on in the coffin, of course, um, floating on the water, the person says, my mom is a fish. Of course, you might think that it's absurd. And of course, absurd is also the uh, another uh, another theme found in, um, <clears throat> sorry, in, in modernist uh, works. So he said that uh, my, my mom is a fish. Of course, for the character, I mean, the character here is insane, but it leads to something else. Not only the theme here is madness, but it is symbolic. Symbolism is, let's say, it's, it is included in the style. We are going to talk about it later on, but it is also absurd, and absurd is another theme. To Something that is absurd is something that, it, that cannot be accepted by your mind, something that is irrational, it's not logical, it cannot be accepted. And among the minor themes as well, you have the loss of faith, like I said. You will find characters um, losing faith in God, government, and even, um, I mean, even in human uh, goodness. Then you have rebellion, because since the, the, the movement itself is a rebellion, so you will find rebellions in the themes. And, of course, um, you have... Uh, you have um, alienation. So when it comes to alienation, or in French, alienation, um, it means like you will find some of the characters. They they change um, their point of view or their feelings about something. For example, they used to love someone. A character used to love someone, and then they change. Uh, they're not loving that person anymore, or maybe um, they used to feel good with uh, their families, for example, and one day they're not, and then they leave the house, and you will have plots, subplots, and all, and so forth, and so on, and so forth. So this is alienation. Then you have fragmentation, like I said, something that is broken, something that does not follow um, the chronological order. And of course, you have primitivism. Primitivism, basically, it's 
the famous um, the famous thing they said um, if we understand the primitive men we will understand the modern men if you want um, then you have legends are also found legends basically might be found in every movement not all of them but basically um, then you have the absurd like I said something that cannot um, be accepted by one's mind then we move to the style when we talk about the style um, the uh, the writer uses flashbacks so the use of flashbacks if you want sometimes the story starts in the past I mean they start with something that is not set in the time of the story itself for example the story happens between for example um, 1960 and um, I don't know like I nine let's say 1920 and 1930 but the beginning of the story will start for example in in 1817 for example so this is what would we mean by a flashback you go back into the past but this has a purpose of course in order to give you a piece of information if you want and we have the second point that is unreliable narrator so sometimes the narrator has a problem with a character in case the narrator is within the story so you cannot trust the narrator because he doesn't like or he has let's say um, a distorted opinion about something about an event so they might change it this is what leads to another point that is the readers contribute to the meaning of the story for example when you know that you cannot trust the narrator which means you have to deduce the meaning this what leads also to multiple narrators as well you have a lot of narrators of course um, uh, this in order to give you or to give the reader um, different point of views um, then we have um, uh, repetition I mean many things are repeated during the, uh, the I mean during the overall story and something about the hero um, the hero is um, usually lonely or you can say that withdrawn and sometimes he is psychotic and an intellectual at the same time this hero usually struggles and fights but at the end they fail and of course when you talk about the move of the story uh, you will start with a hard situation then there's a struggling misery and at the end there is failure and of course like I said there is symbolism same example with William uh, Faulkner uh, who said that um, his his uh, I mean the character in his poem says or said uh, my mom is is a fish so for us let's say the first time we hear about this we can say that it's, it's absurd um, it's also uh, madness but it symbolizes something this is what we mean by symbolism and at the end we are going to talk about the language and it is something that um, uh, it's not long language is complex language is dense and also elliptical and very difficult why do they use this kind of language in order to search for new artistic ways then finally to round off we are going to move to some of the uh, authors of the movement the first one that we're going to mention is T.S. Eliot if you want and we will all agree that Eliot was very smart and talented um, his his poems are amazing outstanding if you want he wrote hollow men um, the wasteland which is absolutely related to uh, modernist uh, literature if you want uh, if you type for example on, on internet the wasteland it will directly lead you to modernist literature <clears throat> it is also known for uh, modernism is also known for this um, this piece of work um, we have um, another author if you want we have James Joyce who is an Irishman from Dublin Joyce is mostly known for his novels though he wrote poetry sometimes plays and essays if you want he also um, uh, wrote he wrote um, the Dubliners um, Finnegan's Wake Ulysses 
So he's he's one of the most important writers of the movement, of course. Um, then you have um, the famous Virginia Woolf. Woolf was an important pioneer of the stream of consciousness technique. Though the mind of an average person was not considered interesting or important enough by earlier writers to merit elevating it to, I mean, to elevate this um, this concept to art, for Woolf and for other modernists, it was the most important thing, the best subject a writer could choose. Um, she wrote A Room of One's, one's Own, uh, she wrote Orlando as well, and many other of his works, uh, her works, sorry, can be found on internet. Well, um, this would be it for today's lecture. I hope I made things clear for you, and I hope um, you have grasped something. And if you have any kind of questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Otherwise, I tell you, see you in the next video. Peace.